Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're going to be doing my 7th out of 8 book reviews for the One Readathon to Rule Them All. I know I'm starting to fall behind on book reviews, so I've got to try and get this one and The White Kings out of the way. And trust me, that one's going to be coming too, but this one's going to be The Riddle Master of Head by Patricia McKillop. And this was a fantasy book that was put out, I believe, in the 70, early 70s. Or late 70s. I think it was 77, actually. But, yeah, 77. But, this is the first book in a trilogy entitled The Riddle Master Trilogy, and I don't know, I really liked it. it was, it's a very short fantasy book, it was only like 200-something-ish pages, and I used it to fulfill the requirement of a sub-300 page book, I believe, and it was just really refreshing, and there's not a ton of violence and gore and stuff going on. There is a little bit of fighting, um, you know, some skirmishes and stuff of that nature, but that's definitely the sort of a, almost like a secondary aspect of it because the main character Morgan, who is the land ruler, the Prince of Head, basically people from Head just don't like fighting, they don't like killing, that's just like not their thing. And in fact, um, they're so like agricultural, the like ruling aristocracy, at least in Head anyways, they like farm and um, work the land alongside their subjects, which I thought was really interesting. Now, it's called the Riddle Master of Head because Morgon also happens to be like a superb Riddle Master. Um, riddling is a really big deal in this world, and basically, it deals with riddles can be like challenges. Um, it's a way just like conveying information, sort of things of that nature. But also, there's a lot of like moral philosophy that is like kind of passed down and passed around through the structures of um, riddles. So, I thought that was really interesting. Like, for example, the main you know, there's like a college uh, in this world at Cape Nard, and it's actually like a riddling college. That's basically how like um, knowledge is passed down and that sort of thing. And most people from Head don't do that because you know they stick to Head and just farm. It's like an island country, and they just like farm and all that stuff. Uh, but he was like wanted to go see the world, and he went out and became he became like a really young like riddle master and everything. The only problem is he has like these stars on his forehead that he was born with. And now people are basically trying to kill him, and he doesn't really know why. And he just goes off on his venture to try and figure out just what in the heck is basically going on. And it's interesting, because even though Morgan isn't like a fighter, he doesn't like killing people, that sort of thing. He's not going off to try and wage some sort of big battle or assassinate someone. He's really just looking for answers to his own like life riddles, basically. Uh, but he's still brave. I mean, he's literally at the beginning of, the, like, right before the... You find out in the first couple pages of the book, so it's not really a spoiler. He basically challenges this, like, really old, wise revenant thing. Uh, that's basically, like, a thousand years old or whatever. Uh, challenges him to a riddle game where the stakes were basically his life. Um, if he would lose, if he couldn't come up with the answer to a riddle, he'd basically die. Um, but he wins, and like I said, you find out in the first couple pages, so it's not a big deal. And he... Um, basically wins this uh, really famous crown. And this is like a sort of a long-standing game, you know, if anyone can beat this guy, you know, you just be basically like top dog. So anyways, he's really brave, so I mean, he literally risks his life just to play a riddle game for fun, basically. But anyways, like I said, the main story is he's going off on his adventure to try to figure out just what is going on, why does he have these stars on his head, and why can he play this harp that no one else can play, and why is everyone trying to <laughs> kill him and assassinate him? So there were a couple things I felt were kind of weird with the book. And the name, first one is, like I said, he's not really a fighter per se. He's more, you know, he uses his wits and his just sort of determination to keep going and all that stuff. Uh, it's not really clear why anyone, why everyone's like failed at assassinating him, to be honest. They seem to take these really like roundabout ways of doing it. Like these really convoluted, so just like, you know, shanking him, like, in an alleyway. It's, like, all these really complex, like, ways of doing it. And it just didn't make sense to me. Um, other than that, really, I thought it was just a short, refreshing read. Um, you, there's a lot of loose ends, but I have a feeling there's... There's still two more books in the trilogy, but I still think there's going to be a lot of loose ends, sort of, in the book. But actually, I like that, and this is uh, my main thing I do enjoy with the book, is it doesn't take you by the hand at all. It basically throws you um, into this world and just says, uh, Patricia McKillop's just like, um, here you go, basically. You don't 
not not everything is tied up nicely. There's no yeah like wrapped up answers and bows or anything like that. It's basically like almost like Dark Souls in a book form, if that makes any sense. Uh, I mean, it's not like dark. I mean, it's not super dark and gritty like that per se. But there's literally just you're not given really much direction like what is going on. But I kind of enjoy that myself. Uh, oh yes, yeah, so there's only one other thing <laughs> that I found annoying with the book. And it's the name of one of the characters. He's not one of the main characters. He's sort of in the background the whole time. But people talk about him a lot. The problem is it's his name is just so ridiculous. Like, it's not even funny. Oh, uh, let's see. Alright, here we go. This is the name of one of the characters that keeps popping up in the background um, throughout the book. Gist... 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 Gistelwickelum, I don't know, Gistels, Gistelwickelum, Gistelwickelum, I'm gonna go with Gistis, I'm gonna go with Gistiselwickelum, Gistiselwickelum, I don't know, something like that, but it's just every time I read that, I'm just like staring at that name, just like, what is going on, because everyone else has fairly normalish names, um, some are kind of weird, but yeah, Gistelswickelum is just, so over the top, I'm just like, I get tongue-tied every time I like look at it without even trying. So yeah, other than, other than that, I really did enjoy the book. And like I said, it's a very short read, doesn't take you by the hand, but it's really refreshing just because it's sort of a really strange concept. Um, and also there is some magic going on, but it, it's not too over the top. I mean, there's some parts that seem kind of over the top, actually, I say that. But it's not all the time, it's just sort of random, and like I said, you just sort of roll with it, and I, I just really enjoyed it. Um, her writing style is really, it's not super fancy, but it's kind of got like an elegant, plain charm to it, I think. I don't know. I really liked it. So overall, I'm definitely going to continue the series. I already got the next two, which is The Air of Sea and Fire, and the last one is Harpist in the Wind. Definitely going to be reading those, hopefully, in the near-ish future. But yeah, overall, really enjoyed it. Just a quick, fun, refreshing read. And I'm going to give The Riddle Master of Head, the first book in the Riddle Master trilogy by Patricia McKillop, a four and a half out of five stars. And always remember, read victoriously.